Welcome to the Ashes to Wings podcast, where we tell stories of overcomers and give you tips and tricks to living a fuller, more embodied life. Here's your host, Jenny O'Connor. Hey friends, welcome to Ashes to Wings. Today we'll be talking with Jessica Fox, who is blazing a trail for ambitious women. You may have caught her on NBC, CBS, Fox, and The CW. She is a master coach, three-time best-selling author, and has been interviewed on TED. Jessica has thousands of hours teaching and training from stage and in intimate settings. She has helped ambitious moms hit consistent $10,000 sales months, go from laid off to signing a six-figure contract within three months, and produce $53,000 in team sales in the first month working together. Most days you will find her in her comfiest jeans or yoga pants, enjoying good coffee and lost in her never-satisfied book addiction. Originally from Canada, Jessica makes her home in Northwest Arkansas, just a few miles from Walmart's headquarters, with her husband Tyler and their three amazing children. Jessica, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. So Jessica, you moved from Canada to Arkansas over 2,000 miles. That's a huge change. What led you there? Oh, well, that's a story. Do you have a moment for me to share that? (laughs) Just a little time, yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, I have to back up a couple of years because Arkansas came after like an avalanche of of things. It actually started out... um, at one point in my career, I was actually the youngest pastor in a rural church. Wow. And being a female in a rural area, uh, I was out to prove myself. And so <laughs> that was like the yes season, right? If I was I was leading public events, I was preaching every opportunity I got, plus being asked to grow and transform this little congregation. And in that season, you know, I had my first baby and I had my second baby and I was on top of the world or so I thought (laughs) Um, I was in denial for over a year that I was dealing with postpartum depression after my second was born. Just a few months after I was getting help for the depression, I actually ended up needing surgery for endometriosis. Wow. Now, do you think that would slow me down? (laughs) <laughs> well, no, but the reality was, was that I was forced to slow down six months later when I'm sitting in my doctor's office and she's sliding a stack of paper across her desk. And she said, Jessica, you are being diagnosed with adrenal fatigue and depression. Here is everything that you need to apply for disability because you can no longer work. Because if you don't slow down right now, you may never recover. Mm -hmm. I went home that night and I can, I remember lying in bed, just crying out to God saying, why me? I did everything that I was supposed to do. I've been working my butt off. Why me? I can't believe this is happening to me. I was at the lowest I have ever been. And then (laughs) my husband and I picked up a couple of shovels and just kept digging. (laughs) Dig that hole deeper. (laughs) Yeah. As within a year, here I am, I'm pregnant with my third. And we are sitting in an office declaring bankruptcy Mm. because my husband's, his business went under. Now, what's really interesting is that I was healthy enough to work, but at the time I was seven months pregnant. So it's not like I worked anyway. And so here we are, my husband's business completely collapsed. I'm ready to give birth and we are out of options. One night we were sitting at the table and We're talking and keep in mind, my husband had replied for 400 jobs in Canada at this point, 400, and there was nothing, nothing. 
We're sitting at the table and I turned to my husband. I was like, Tyler, why don't we start looking for jobs in the U S huh? <laughs> no, seriously, honey, you're American. We can live anywhere. You're right. That night he applied and found his dream job and he got an interview within a week and they offered him the job on the spot. Amazing. And what's really interesting, it was in that moment where we actually made one of the hardest decisions we made in that season. We decided to set some non-negotiables for moving. Now, keep in mind, I missed this part, but I'm going to go back because you guys need to know about this. The day of his interview, the phone started ringing and up pops up Arkansas. And I looked at my husband. I was like, Arkansas? I thought you applied for a job in Arizona. <laughs> I had to look up where Arkansas was on a map. <laughs> it's in the South, if you guys didn't know. Yes. <laughs> so here we are. They're offering him the job. And so we set some non-negotiables. And keep in mind, we were out of options. We had no right to do this. But it was in that moment where we decided to become the creators of our future. No matter what you face, there is always hope and always a way. So we got back to the company and we said three things. We needed a moving allowance to actually get to Arkansas. They needed to fly us down so we could see the area and they needed to raise the salary. And they said, yes. They said, yes. And literally within three weeks, we packed our entire life into a six by 12 U-Haul trailer and drove 2,331 miles to Arkansas, <laughs> Northwest Arkansas. And we landed in 100 degree humid weather. Oh, no. And yeah, it was wild. Like we drove. And by the way. We camped. We camped. With three kids. With three kids and a dog. In the summer in Arkansas. In sweaty, <laughs> humid, all of that. Like, can you imagine my three-month-old baby changing poopy diapers in a humid, hot day? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be an award for that, I have to think. <laughs> it, it was an adventure. And not to mention, we had nowhere to live when we landed. And we camped the first week we lived here. We ended up quickly finding a house and fast forward here a couple of years. And my husband is literally at the top of his industry working with Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. And I went from burned out, bankrupt, no options to actually starting a coaching consulting firm and building it in six figure to six figures in 12 months. So hence why I'm here today and getting to help amazing, ambitious mamas be the business owners of their dreams too. Amazing. And as someone who has health issues, including depression and chronic fatigue syndrome, your experience with adrenal fatigue and depression really spoke to me. So how do you take care of your health? It is a fine balance, right? So I know for me, um, I'm very, very careful and aware of my stress levels because when my stress levels are too high, um, I start, the, the indicator for me is anxiety. I start having anxiety attacks um, on a regular basis, which very quickly turns into snappy, angry mom, which I don't want to be. Yeah, so the biggest thing for me is to be mindful of how many hours I'm working. As a business owner, it's very easy to work too many hours. So I actually have a very set schedule where I don't work more than 25 hours a week. Um, yoga and hiking are my saving grace in so many ways getting out into nature and doing the things that I love and truly just prioritizing joy. I have to be totally honest that, you know, it's funny. We don't think of things like joy as a health aspect, but where we, you know, we're like, Oh, do you take your vitamins? Do you exercise? Do you eat? Well, of, of course I do all those things, but truly prioritizing joy and doing the things that give me joy on a, on a daily basis. That is truly one of the ways that I keep myself healthy. Such great advice. 
So Jessica, you've mentioned that you're also a minister. Tell me about that. What was it like being not only a female minister in a rural area, but one of the youngest? Yeah, you know, being a female minister in a rural area, um, I really enjoyed it. it. It really taught me a lot about compassion and how to interact with people, especially in, when they are going through really hard things. You know, when your purpose in life is to empower, you just you look for opportunities anywhere. And, you know, being a minister is one of the ways that you do get to do that. And so I just chose to own it. And, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Now being as ambitious and, and such a go-getter that I am. um, And from the lack of experience, I ended up pushing myself into that place of burnout. But it was, it was an interesting season. And it was a season that I learned and grew from in a lot of different ways. I love that. And you mentioned your coaching program. What led you to coaching? Oh, again, my purpose is to empower. And um, after I burned out, you know, sometimes when you go through those really dark places, it's a time to reevaluate. And one of the things I realized was that I wanted, first of all, like my dreams for my life were bigger than a rural ministry opportunity provided. And I realized that I wanted to be, I wanted to be better equipped for the variances of human existence. And, and I had to work through so much of my own resistance, my own setbacks, the areas that were blocking me to really find my joy again. Hmm. And I realized that through that journey and with training, I could help others as well. You know, one of the things that I love is, is, is being an achiever and being successful. And, and frankly, I do want, I wanted financial freedom. And so moving into the coaching realm, I still get to empower people. I still get to work with people and I got to get to now work with people on a deeper level. And it, it just, it seemed like a really natural transition because it fit in with everything that I was already doing. And, and now um, the, the breakthroughs and the change in people's life is just phenomenal. And I still get to speak and train and all that fun stuff. So it was, it was just a really good fit and really in alignment with who I feel that I am and who I'm called to be. Wonderful. And you work primarily with moms. I do. Yeah. yeah. I work with entrepreneurial moms. I, you know, as a mom myself, I do understand how you know, the interruption and the tension between business and motherhood, it not only affects the profitability in your business at times, but it also can really affect your confidence in your ability to see your dream and desire come to fruition. And so being a business mindset coach and helping these women own their ambition, own their dreams and desires, but also marry that in a way where they are a kick-ass mom. Mm-hmm. And seeing that grow in their family while helping other people, that is amazing. It's phenomenal. Being an entrepreneurial mom, as you well know, is this weird lifestyle, but it is doable, you know? And, and I want women to know that if they have a dream to be an entrepreneur and, they're, and they want to do it while they're raising kids, you can do this. You can be successful. There's simple strategies simple mindset shifts that need to be in place. And I like to say, truly, it's as simple as ABC. Love that. And it's, I think it's such a powerful thing for kids to see their moms be an entrepreneur, be a business owner, to take yeah. sovereignty over their career and their life direction. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it can be an incredibly powerful lesson for our kids to see. I love Absolutely. that. 100%. I wanted to touch back a little bit on your journey with postpartum depression. And I know that's something that I dealt with with one of my children's deliveries too. What are some signs that people can look out for in their own lives and in the people that they love to see, you know, maybe this person is dealing with postpartum depression. How can they reach out? How can they be most effective in helping? That is a great question. Um, I... (sighs) That's a hard one. I think part of it, you know, it varies from person to person. Um, For yourself, if you're finding yourself irrationally angry about things, um, if you are 
constantly overwhelmed by your newborn for, and you're thinking, what's wrong with me? I think that's a really big key where you you're in a situation where you're like, what is wrong with me? Or if a loved one who maybe is not, um, I don't know what the right word is, but if they're going, what's wrong with you? Hmm. Because sometimes our, like there is that, you know, the baby blues and there is this hormonal transition that we go through, but it's when you don't, you can't shake it. And, you know, it could be insomnia or you can't get out of bed, Right where you're constantly overwhelmed. If you have other children, you're probably yelling and snapping at them a lot more than you would, or that's even reasonable. And if you are self-aware, literally, you're going to, you just know, you're like, what is wrong with me? Why am I like this? If you are having those kind of thoughts, seek help. Postpartum depression is so much more common than we realize. And truly, if you don't feel like you're coping um, or you just you're feeling off and you can't quite put your finger on it, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor about it, um, to talk to a loved one. Because here's the thing. Um, I don't know about you, but my husband is very careful about pointing out when I'm less than stellar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Although because we've been on a depression journey for a significant amount of years, he knows now and he'll call it out now as a way to help me. Because let's be really honest, I I never fully recovered from postpartum. Mm. In fact, after now postpartum with the burnout, you know, I, I'm clinic considered clinically depressed, and I do need support around that. And so it's gonna, it's an ongoing thing for me. And, and my husband's awareness of that has really elevated quite significantly. So he knows when I'm off and if I need more help as well. Um, But truly with postpartum, don't be, when your doctor asks you about your emotions, which they always do in your checkups, don't lie to yourself or to your doctor because they are there to support you with something that's very normal and very common. And frankly, you're going to have a far more joyous baby season of life if you're getting the support that you need so so important Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have anxiety around admitting yeah I'm not feeling myself you know or that awkwardness that you you expect might happen but that's why they ask you it's so important to be honest with your doctor yeah absolutely what advice would you give women who are driven to achieve a lot but they're stressed out That is a great question. Thank you. Yeah. There's a couple things. First of all, if you're dealing with a lot of stress, my first question for you is, do you have the support that you need? You can have it all. But the truth of the matter is, is that you cannot do this by yourself. And often when I um, start working with clients, they're overwhelmed and stressed out and sometimes on the edge of burnout because they're trying to do everything themselves without the support, the structure, and the systems that they need to thrive. And that's truly why so many women who are trying to build a business while raising kids feel like they're in survival mode all of the time. I can, I can definitely, I've been in that place before, so I can relate to that. So how do we move from surviving to thriving? Oh, my favorite thing. (laughs) That is one of my favorite things. Well, You know, I don't know if you guys heard it earlier. It is truly as simple as A, B, C. And so is it okay if I drop my ABCs here? Yes, please. Okay. So ladies, I want you to think, if you're feeling in survival mode, I want you to think ABCs now, not not the ones we sing to our kids, but (sighs) this. Ask yourself these four questions. A, am I in alignment? As in, am, what is what I'm doing in alignment with my sense of purpose? and my sense of vision and dream for my life? Am I in alignment? B, do I believe that it's possible for me to actually build this amazing business and be a successful mom? And as a caveat here, belief is like a muscle that we have to exercise. And the belief aspect takes a little bit more time, but here's the reality. We get to choose. Belief always starts with the choice of, yes, I'm going to choose to believe that this is possible. 
Some days I might be stronger in my belief than others. And in belief is where we need support from somebody like a coach or a mentor to continue to bring us back to that place of showing us how we've grown, how we've changed. And really, you know, coaches and mentors are life belief trainers, truly. So am I in alignment with my sense of purpose and the dream and vision that I'm holding? Do I believe that it's possible? And is it possible for me? Do I believe in myself and have the confidence to see that through? C, have I created the strategy to see it happen? And by the way, alignment and belief come before strategy. Just saying. When you start with strategy without a sense of alignment and belief, you're, you're, you're on a road to nowhere. Just saying. So have I created a strategy that's actually going to see my business thrive, that's going to see my motherhood thrive? And as a second C, am I in a community that supports me? And if it's not your family, find it. That's one of the things that I love about what I do as a coach is I create community of like-minded women. And then D is dig your heels in. Now, once you are in alignment, you're believing, you've got, you've created your strategy, you need to be determined and desiring to see it come to fruition. So that's where the action comes in, digging our heels in, doing the work and to see it come alive. So ABCs, ladies, alignment, belief, create community and strategy, and then dig those heels in and get her done. I love that. (laughs) Get her done. I love that it's not just mindset and sitting there dreaming up this reality, visualizing this reality, but putting the muscle in behind it and the determination. Well, the reality is, is once we have it in place, it's nothing's going to come about without action. Yes. Like, you know, and that's why, you know, it's so, that's another thing I see so often is I, I see these amazing women with these huge dreams and I'm like, okay, what have you done so far to start moving you in that direction? And they're like, I'm too afraid. <laughs> and that's where I get to come with my big coach boot and say, okay, we're pushing you off of the train and getting you walking and getting you into action so that it actually comes to fruition. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and just on the side of that, every small step is one step forward and just commit to doing something and then trusting the process along the way. Absolutely. And that to me really points out the importance of having a coach in your life because sometimes we get in our heads. And and I say that as someone who is a coach and who has coaches, sometimes we get in our heads and we get in our own way and we're stuck and we need somebody to step in and say, okay, it's time to move. And (laughs) exactly, absolutely. Jessica, our podcast is called Ashes to Wings, referring to the story of the phoenix transforming and rising from the ashes. I like to ask all of our guests this question. What does rise above mean in your life? That is a great question. Rising up is about not letting your past, your failures, or your circumstances define you, but knowing your worth, your value and who you are and being willing to rise into that, to be the woman that you have been created to be and knowing that the ashes were just that form of, something had to die so that the new you, this phoenix rising could be born. Um, There are aspects of life where we have to die unto ourselves, where we have to let parts of us go. And that's okay. Because out of that, we are constantly growing, constantly becoming new and better. And that's what rising up means. Jessica, I always like to leave our listeners with a bumper sticker statement, a summary of what you've just talked about that would fit on a bumper sticker. So what would your bumper sticker be? Ambitious mamas can have it all. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Great. So I have a few rapid fire fun questions for you if you're game. I'm always game. I love (laughs) games. Yes. So what is the best compliment you've ever received? (laughs) Uh, Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a husband compliment. (laughs) It is a husband compliment. (laughs) Honestly, 
yeah, who's that girl with the nice ass? That <laughs> 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 my husband before we met. That's fantastic. And you snapped him up. Good girl. <laughs> I love it. What is your favorite gadget? Oh, uh, my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a pacifier. I can't go anywhere without it. Truth. Truth. So along those lines, if you had to delete all but three apps on your phone, which ones would you keep? Um, my Google Calendar. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um oh gosh um gardenscapes i love playing gardenscapes and amazon <laughs> <laughs> or audible oh which one Ooh, yeah that's either tough. amazon or audible yeah that is tough i do a lot of audible <laughs> and a lot of amazon <laughs> We just we just hope they deliver when husbands aren't home. <laughs> what are your favorite pizza toppings? <gasps> Italian sausage and black olives. And wait, what was the second one? And black olives. Oh, okay. I know. Interesting. Uh-huh. I know that you have a book addiction, <laughs> like myself. What book belongs on everyone's bookshelf? Fiction or nonfiction? Ooh, I'll let you choose. Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> you can't, you um, can't try to get away with two. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Okay, so nonfiction. Um, I love The Success Principles by Jack Canfield and The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. So there's a double there. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, <laughs> fiction. And if you have not read this book, it's called The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. That is my favorite, favorite, favorite fiction book. Great. Awesome. I got to see Jack Canfield speak once and he was amazing. Just so inspiring and so wonderful. Great Love choices. Him. All right. And then this one's my favorite. What is your guilty pleasure song? What is my guilty? <laughs> oh my gosh. What is that song by Billie Eilish? And it's just so wrong, but it has such a thick beat and I love dancing to it. What is it called? Oh. Okay. I'll pick a different one. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> my guilty pleasure song is I'm too sexy. Yes. <laughs> or I'm sexy and I know it by LMAFO. <laughs> so much it is a really fun song i did a, a pole performance to that one it was really really Which fun one? i'm, um, I'm sexy, sexy and i know it. know it oh my gosh yeah we had like my friend was was dressed up like a little angel and i was the little devil and so we did kind of like the sporty <laughs> side of pole and the sexy side of pole and yeah it, it was really cute it was really cute <laughs> that's, I, yeah that's a great song <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Jessica, I know you have an offer just for our Ashes to Wings listeners. Tell us about that. Yeah. So as we mentioned, I am a business mindset coach for entrepreneurial moms. And so I have two actually for you. The first one is my ambitious mom's guide to thrive. This is six ways that you can take those ABCs and actually start implementing them with practical tools. You can download that on my gift to you. The other gift that I have for you is a gift of my time. I believe so strongly that it's amazing what a conversation can do to transform. So if you are needing some time, I have a pathway to thrive consultation that I'm offering. I've got five of those available for your listeners. In that consultation, we're going to talk about where you want to be in your motherhood, in your business really figure out what's holding you back and then create a strategy together on how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And so you're going to walk away with some really practical step-by-step -step ways that you can start moving into that direction. So that's the pathway to thrive. It's one hour and I'm happy to offer that as well. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Make sure you let her know you're coming from Ashes to Wings and you can find the link for that offer along with Jessica's social media links on her guest page on our website. That's at ashes2wings.net 
slash Jessica dash Fox. Make sure you give her a follow. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was amazing. So just to recap our episode, Jessica reminded us that thriving in life is truly as simple as your ABCs, aligning with your vision and purpose, believing you can experience what you desire in this life, creating a strategic plan and community, digging your heels in, determined to see it happen. And again, Jessica's bumper sticker was ambitious women can have it all. These fit so nicely with our values at Ashes to Wings. From the importance of your vision and purpose to the incredible things you can accomplish when you're determined. I hope you've learned something that motivates you today. Don't forget to check out Jessica's guest page. Again, that's at ashestowings.net slash jessica-fox. Friends, thank you for listening. Don't forget to follow the show, rate, and review. See you next time. Thanks for listening. The best way to learn is to teach someone else. So take one thing you learned today and share it with a friend. Find Jenny on Instagram at the underscore Jenny underscore O'Connor and online at JennyO'Connor.com. Subscribe for new episodes. Until next time, rise above.